Amtrak Sunset Limited leaves Los Angeles Union Station at 10 o'clock at night, so it's a departure in the dark. The train moves slowly through the sparkling city lights, with passengers often falling asleep before the Sunset Limited leaves the sprawling lights of this city that never sleeps. We're headed east toward New Orleans on this route that was the pride of the Southern Pacific Railroad Empire. We awake to the big sky of the American Southwest. Whether in Southern Arizona, New Mexico, or West Texas, this is all desert country. It's anything but featureless landscape with plenty of beauty for passengers to see and different enough to spark the imagination. The towns and the cities are spaced far apart here. Breakfast in Tucson, the small towns of Lordsburg and others that closely follow Interstate 10. Mostly though, it's a world of yucca plants and sagebrush, with occasional sightings of deer, pronghorns, and roadrunners. We don't see the next city until we approach El Paso, Texas, and the border with Mexico. If you look off to the right-hand side of the train, you're going to catch a glimpse of the famous wall. Of course, this is W's wall. we got to give credit where credit is due. This is not Trump's wall. This is W's wall. In just a few moments, we're going to be passing the suburb of Anapra. That's a suburb of Ciudad Juarez the state of Chihuahua, Mexico. Folks, that means we're going to be about 10 minutes away from El Paso, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? If you look off to the left or the right hand side of the train, we're passing over the high bridge, crossing over the Rio Bravo. Folks these days call it the Rio Grande. John Wayne used to call it the Rio Bravo. That signifies we're passing from the state of New Mexico into the state of Texas. Welcome to Texas, y'all. Once on the Texas side, we see new railroad ties laid down and construction of a new freeway. From here, a look out the train window gives us a view of El Paso's sister city, Ciudad Juarez, clearly visible across the border. El Paso is by no means the sleepy border town of Western movies. It's one of the fastest growing cities in the United States. There's a lot of high tech and financial services here and lots of construction to go along with this economic growth. 
Along the border, we see the interdependence of the economics of the United States and Mexico. With all this new construction along the border, it seems to take forever for our train to reach the El Paso station. Well, that gives us a chance to appreciate this colorful scene from our neighbors in Mexico. We do finally arrive and get a view of this distinctive passenger station at El Paso. This is the first chance since Tucson, Arizona for people to get off the train and walk around a bit. New passengers get on here along with the wagon loads of checked bags. Along with the powerful locomotives that pull the Sunset Limited, I get to videotape a favorite car on the train. This is the viewing car with unassigned seats facing outward and windows along the ceiling for a better look at scenery. During our 2018 trip, we saw this completed section of elevated roadway running right along the border with Mexico. Our next stop would be Alpine, Texas, with a generous amount of scenery between El Paso and there. By the time we reach Alpine, it was dark. Our stop at San Antonio, where we decouple two cars that become part of the Texas Eagle, is also under cover of darkness. The next city we see in the light of day is Houston. Besides Los Angeles, Houston is the biggest city we see on this route. We ease into the Houston platform where many holiday travelers board for points east, especially New Orleans. There's nothing grandiose about Houston's Amtrak station. It's situated below the level of some freeways and it's strictly utilitarian. Our stop here is usually long enough for another stretching of legs. It's a lot of check baggage to get off and then on. When it's not stormy, it's usually pleasant to walk the platform. During our last trip, the train backed out of the station, retracing our steps when we arrived. This provided us a view of these private railroad cars. We kept backing up until we could switch to the main line. Now moving forward, we pass through construction of another freeway the petroleum industry has built the city of Houston into an urban powerhouse. Diversification has continued that growth. Houston is now the fourth largest city in the United States. We left Houston on schedule. The next stop would be Beaumont, an easy hour or two from Houston. But we came to a stop in a swampy area and stayed there for four hours. A freight train ahead of us broke down, and there was nothing to do but wait. We thought we'd never get to Beaumont. We did finally arrive there, and a new crew was ready to take the Sunset Limited the rest of the way into New Orleans. 
There was no way, though, to make up all this lost time. Outside of the Northeast Corridor, Amtrak has to rent passage on rails owned by freight companies. Orange, Texas is no longer a stop for the Sunset Limited, but it is the last town before crossing into Louisiana. They got clobbered here by that uh, Hurricane Harvey too, Seen all along the Sabine. Of, I just saw a lot of windows boarded up. Yeah. Orange, Texas. We're about to cross the Sabine River, the border between Texas and Louisiana. Sabine River. The Calcasieu River Bridge told me we we're in Lake Charles, the first stop in Louisiana. We would detrain in Lafayette, the next stop, in the dark. The Sunset Limited would continue on to New Orleans. <laughs> 